we need to compare the magnitudes of the displacement current and the conduction current. And to, in order to do that, we need an expression for the electric field. So for convenience, let's develop an expression for the electric field at the origin. So we'll have x is equal to y is equal to z is equal to zero. Let's also assume our electric field is oriented along the z-axis, so we'll have only a z component. And since the electric field is sinusoidally varying, we'll give it some amplitude cosine omega t. So that's the expression for the electric field. Then we can say the conduction current density amplitude is sigma ez and the displacement current density epsilon naught epsilon r the ez dt. Now it's hard to directly compare these in the time domain because of the time derivative. So instead let's compare these two currents in the sinusoidal steady state. When we convert to the sinusoidal steady state we're going to take the Fourier transform of both expressions and we're going to get j omega for our time derivative. So here we're going to get uh, epsilon naught epsilon r the magnitude of j omega and e z and that is the phasor. So the magnitude of j is 1 so you get epsilon naught epsilon r omega and the amplitude of E, uh, which is actually just E naught. So I'll write that as E naught. And then when we convert the other conduction current density, we can write that as sigma and E naught. So here is our Fourier transform. Okay, so now if we compare these two magnitudes, come up with a ratio here of conduction current to displacement current, and we will get s sigma E naught over omega epsilon, I'll combine those again just for convenience, uh, at E naught. Those can cancel, and we just get sigma over omega epsilon. In other words, this ratio we just came up with sigma over omega epsilon, that is the loss tangent. And it's um, this ratio, if it's really large, say if it's greater than 100, the numerator dominates, meaning that the magnetic field of the electromagnetic wave propagating through the ground is primarily generated by conduction current. So I'll say conduction current density dominates. This 100 isn't a uh, hard cutoff, it's just what the book is, and maybe it's oftenly used, often used. All right, if the value is very small, say less than 0 0.01, then we can say the displacement current dominates. So then the magnetic field of the electromagnetic wave propagating to the ground would primarily be generated by displacement current. So now for the ground, if we plug in our numbers, we can plug in numbers for sigma and omega and epsilon. Let's say at one megahertz, we're going to get sigma over omega epsilon is about equal to 1.8. So there's you know, nearly twice as much conduction current as there is displacement current, but we don't fall into one of these regimes, so we can't classify the ground as being a good conductor or having, having a conduction current that dominates or a displacement current that dominates. And for the other end of our frequency range, sigma over omega epsilon is about equal to 0.006. So then this means that the really highest frequencies of our EMP, E1 component, then it starts to have the displacement current dominate. So let's get back to our measurement setup now. Now we can start to think about how the electromagnetic wave will interact with the wood platform that we're considering using. First we can think about whether the wood, uh, whether we have the displacement current or the conduction current would dominate in the wood. And let's look over the frequency range from 1 to 300 
megahertz. And uh, it, um, the relative permittivity, I'll remind you, is it, we'll say it's about two for this dry wood. And the um, <clears throat> conductivity is on the order of one e to the minus 15 siemens per meter. So go ahead and calculate the last tangent and see which term dominates.